So we have just gone through a demonstration of a total knee replacement. We're at the trial stage and we've taken our knee uh, through a range of motion just to see how we like our positioning. And we're not seeing what we like. And what the obvious problem here is that our patella tracking is off. That we go from full extension, our knee is well balanced, we don't have a flexion contracture. Ligamentously, we like how it sits. It's got a little play in valgus, a little play in varus. But as we go from extension through a flexion arc, you can see that the patella sits high on the femoral groove, and then at about 40 degrees of flexion, then it starts to sit in. And if you look at in deep flexion, you can see uh, the increase in our quadriceps ankle angle. So let's take this opportunity just to talk about the Q angle in total knee arthroplasty, why it's important, and how we mess it up. So first of all, what is a quadriceps angle? And this may be familiar to most people, but a quadriceps angle is a way to define the dynamic um, motion of the quadriceps and the patella through an arc of motion. And we define it from the middle of the tibial tubercle to the middle of the patella, so that line right there with a line from the middle of the patella in the, the arc of the extensor mechanism, which is drawn from the anterior superioliac spine. Normally it's 11 degrees, but if there's huge variability, you can get plus or minus up to seven, seven degrees in that. So it changes a lot from person to person. In total knee replacement, it's probably the most common uh, complication that we see in total knees. It's not the most serious, but it's the most common. Um, there's lots of technical issues that, that affect patella tracking and total knee, total knee replacement. Marginal errors in a few of them can, ca can cause this, or big errors in one of the issues can cause it. Okay? So let's try to figure out what's going on with this and why our patella is not tracking well. So, you know, we know the common offenders. So the common offenders for poor patella tracking, the most common is internal rotation of our femoral component that we take that component and it doesn't match the transepicondylar axis that we've referenced off the posterior femoral condyles and that wasn't a good reference. So our component is rotated and that doesn't allow our patella to track well. And just to demonstrate that, if you take a distal femoral component and you put it where it needs to be and you take it and you internally rotate it, then now that angle has increased from here to here. So anything that changes the quadriceps angle that increases lateralization forces is a bad thing. So internal rotation of that femoral component certainly can increase the, the quadriceps angle and cause our patella to track laterally through an arc of motion. That's one. Another possibility here is that this femoral component is medialized and again pure math, the quadriceps angle is increased because the pivot point has changed and now we've pushed it in here when it should be out here. So medialization, internal rotation. Another thing that can change the, uh, the angle of pull is where we put the tibial tray. If we internally rotate the, the tibia and we place it in internal rotation, then what that is going to do is effectively cause it to forcefully externally rotate through an arc of motion. We know that the tibia follows the femur. If it's placed in a fixed bearing internal rotation, it'll force to match that femur through an arc of motion, arc of motion and externally rotate, again increasing the Q angle. Okay. All right, so why don't we take this down and just have a look and see what, see what we've done. Okay. <coughs> so why don't I get that there? Why don't you put a home in on the inside here? I'll take out the tibial tray. And once you take off that femur, and let's have a look. Okay, so let's just look at, at our intra flexion gap first. So if we look at our flexion gap, it looks fairly well balanced. So in terms of our transepicondylar axis, we drew in our transepicondylar axis. We drew our white sides line, but that's been taken off with our cuts, and our posterior cuts are parallel to our transepicondylar axis. So I think from a rotation point of view, the femoral component rotation is good. Okay? What about medialization? I think if you look right here, you can see where we cut the sulcus, and the sulcus certainly is very medial. If this is midline right here at the top of the arc, this is pushed in. So I think our, our culprit here is that our component is too medial, 
and we've just increased that Q angle by pushing the sulcus to medial, and that uh, patella is trying to drop in it through an arc of motion. Makes sense? Makes sense. Okay. It's a hard fix because we've already cut the bone. So um, going to a cemented implant may fix it uh, if we push it laterally. So let's just, let's just let's take our component. Uh, why don't you take our saw right there, and let's just cut that sulcus laterally. Let me lock, that, lock it up here. And why don't we just cut the sulcus just a little bit laterally so we can lateralize that component. Just to, sh just to show it? Just to show it. Okay, so there was our initial position. We've recut our sulcus, so we'll push that a little more lateral. Okay, let me impact that. All right, let's put our tibial tray back in. Good. And now let's just see <coughs> if the trial looks any better. Oops, let me just get our gap off there. So right away, our quadriceps angle looks better, that the sulcus isn't medialized now. It sits where it needs to sit, and it looks like it's tracking down the middle. All right, saved. Perfect.